Good morning, everyone. Good morning, and welcome to worship here this morning. A few announcements uh, before we begin. I want to invite everyone to sign in on the fellowship pad that's in the pew near you. Uh, let us know that you're here. Any information you'd like to pass along to the church office, uh, you can do so with our uh, fellowship pad. We, there was a memorial service here yesterday afternoon for Marianne Gooseman. If you weren't able to be here or uh, know someone who wasn't able to be here or is out of town, uh, there's a recording available that can be uh, sent, so uh, have an email address. Uh, you can tell me or the church office, and we can uh, send you all that. Uh, this evening, uh, here in uh, Fellowship Hall at 5 p.m., uh, folks are getting together to talk about intergenerational ministry uh, here at Level Green Church and what we could do for uh, children and families. And uh, so you're welcome to join us. Uh, baked potato. We're going to feed you baked potato bar. When's the last time you had a good baked potato? Uh, so that'll be 5 o'clock uh, here this evening. This coming week, the G2R group uh, resumes on Thursday at 7 p.m. in uh, room 203-205 above the church office, uh, always accepting uh, new students to that group. And uh, on our prayer list for today is uh, Greg Martz, uh, recognized his um, uh, deployment a few weeks ago. And uh, if you'd like to support him during that time, uh, in the back of the sanctuary, uh, there's a U.S. flag bin, I'll call it. Uh, you can place cards in there. There's also cards next to that bin. Uh, if you want to fill one out for Greg or for someone in his unit, uh, you can place it in that bin about monthly. We're going to send uh, stuff to him. So that's available. There's more information uh, inserted in your bulletin for today. We're two weeks away from our annual congregational meeting that will uh, take place about 1135 on Sunday, January the 28th. So reports are due this week into the church office for our packet. So there's more information uh, in the bulletin. I invite you to check that out. Uh, but for now, let us stand and greet one another in the name of the Lord Jesus. Yes, thank you. people get the same, same bouquet of flowers twice in one day. 
Please join me in our call to worship. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You are familiar with all my ways. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. We enter into worship with prayer. All-knowing God, we gather together with praise and thanksgiving for who you are and for all that you have done for us. You know us better than we know ourselves, all our thoughts and actions, and yet you love us. Your love encircles us gently, leading and guiding and blessing. We praise you for your faithful presence in our lives. May your spirit move in our hearts and minds as we worship together examine our attitudes and actions, lay bare the things we need to confess, challenge us with your word, and guide us onto paths that lead to life. Amen. Our first hymn is number 343. Please stand. <laughs>
We affirm our faith by reciting the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Please join me again as we say our prayer of confession. O oh Lord, you know us inside and out. We pretend that you see us from a far away, that we can hide our selfishness from you. Yet you alone know the fickleness of our hearts. You know even our words of repentance before we conform them. Forgive us and make us whole. Fill us with gratitude for our very being. Lay your hand upon us and bless us. Give us words to tell the world of your wonderful works. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, who calls us by name to follow him. Amen. Christ died for our sins. He made a full atonement for us. We are forgiven and we have the promise of eternal life. Feel that forgiveness in your hearts. We are his children. Amen. You may be seated. I invite our children to come forward for our children's time. If you're not already there.
Thank you, choir. As we enter into our prayer time here for this morning, we want to uh, lift up in prayer Gloria Arnott. She's uh, currently at Forbes Hospital. She's recovering from COVID. Hopefully, uh, in a few days, she'll be uh, moved to rehab at uh, William Penn. So I want to pray for Gloria here this morning. Uh, Prayers for Maria McBride as she continues to heal from open-heart surgery and lift up Greg Martz and his family uh, here in prayer today. I want to continue to pray for the work that the Lord has set before us here this year and continued prayers for our world, for peace in the Ukraine and in Israel. Let's come together in prayer. We praise you, O God of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, for you alone are worthy of our praise and our worship. And we thank you that Your throne of grace is always open and available to us and that we can come before you in prayer. Lord, we thank you that you are a God of healing and a God of mercy, and we pray today for those in need of your healing. We pray for Gloria Arnott and Maria McBride. We lift up to you the names that are listed in our bulletin that we may may be mindful of those needs here in, in this week. We lift up Greg Martz here today, and we pray for him and his family and ask that your hand of protection would be upon him and that you would provide uh, for all of their needs, O God. We thank you for the work that you give to us, the work of your kingdom, for the gifts that you give to us to do your kingdom work. We are thankful, and we pray that you would continue to direct us. Lord, may we raise up uh, new generations of uh, disciples of Jesus Christ. May we continue to meet the needs of those in our community so they can hear of Jesus. We pray that you would continue to guide us in your work. And as we pray for our world, we pray for peace as we are surrounded by so much conflict and hardship and violence. We pray for peace. We pray for peace in the Ukraine, for peace in Israel. We ask in our own lives, O God, that we may be instruments of your peace and your grace. We ask now that you would quiet our hearts as we come before you in a few moments of silent prayer. Hear our prayers, O God. We thank you for this time together in prayer as we worship together. And we lift up to you all of our prayers in the name of the risen Lord Jesus Christ who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. With joyful and thankful hearts, we come before the Lord now with our tithes and our offerings.
almighty God, giver of every good and perfect gift, teach us to give to you all that we have and all that we are, that we may praise you, not with our words only, but with our whole lives. Amen. Our praise song is How Great Is Our Lord. Our Old Testament lesson is 1 Samuel 3, verses 1 through 10. That's on page 231 in the Pew Bible. Sorry, but you knew to sit down. <laughs> Listen for the call of God. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. One night Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. But Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. Again the Lord called, Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. My son, Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. A third time the Lord called, Samuel and Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. Then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, Go and lie down, and if he calls you, say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord came and stood there, calling as at the other times, Samuel, Samuel, then Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. 
In the New Testament this morning, we hear from John's Gospel, chapter 1, verses 43 through 51, as we've just heard the call of Samuel, we hear the Lord Jesus calling Philip and Nathaniel to follow him. John chapter 1, verses 43 to 51. The next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Finding Philip, he said to him, follow me. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethsaida. Philip found Nathanael and told him, We have found the one Moses wrote about in the law and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nazareth? Can anything good come from there? Nathanael asked. Come and see, said Philip. When Jesus saw Nathanael approaching, he said of him, Here truly is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. How do you know me? Nathanael asked. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. Then Nathanael declared, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus said, you believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree. You will see greater things than that. He then added, very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the son of man. We give thanks to God for his word to us here today. Please join me in prayer. Thank you, O God, as we worship together, we come to your word, your word of scripture that directs us to our, your word, O God, made flesh in Jesus Christ. We thank you for your uh, coming to us, uh, searching for us, calling us by name to follow you. We pray that we may hear that call here today. Speak to us in your Holy Spirit, O God, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. In his book, Welcoming Justice, Charles Marsh describes one of Martin Luther King Jr.'s profound encounters with the risen Christ. He writes, in January of 1956, King returned home at around midnight after a long day of organizational meetings. His wife and young daughter were already in bed, and King was eager to join them. But a threatening call, the kind of call that he was getting as many as 30 to 40 times a day, interrupted his attempt to get some much-needed rest. When he tried to go back to bed, he could not shake the menacing voice that kept repeating the hateful words in his head. King got up, made a pot of coffee, and sat down at his kitchen table. With his head buried in his hands, he cried out to God. There in his kitchen, in the middle of the night, when he had come to the end of his strength, King met the living Christ in an experience that would carry him through the remainder of his life. I heard the voice of Jesus saying still to fight on. King later recalled, he promised never to leave me, never to leave me alone. He promised never to leave me, no, never alone. In the stillness of that Alabama night, the voice of Jesus proved more convincing than the threatening voice of the anonymous caller. The voice of Jesus gave him the courage to press through the tumultuous year of 1956 to the victorious end of the Montgomery bus boycott. More than that, it gave him a vision for ministry that would drive him for the rest of his life. This morning, we're reminded of God's call on our lives, calling us by name to follow him, uh, calling us by name to come to him in faith. And God is also, God continues to call us, and he calls us to something specific to serve his kingdom. There are stories throughout scripture of God calling people to follow him, to trust in him, and then calling them to specific tasks. So this morning we hear the call of Samuel as he uh, moves in faith at a young age, and we hear of Philip and Nathaniel, uh, slightly older, uh, coming to uh, saving faith in Jesus Christ as they're face to face with him. We hear Samuel being called, by, uh, called to faith uh, by the Lord in 1 Samuel chapter 3. The backstory to that of the first two chapters of uh, 1 Samuel is that Samuel's mother, Hannah, went to the temple and asked the Lord for a child. And she encounters Eli, the temple priest, who says that the Lord will answer her prayer. Hannah then gives her son, Samuel, because she had a son, it'd be a short book if not, Uh, Hannah gives her son Samuel to Eli so he can serve in the temple. She offers a prayer that's similar to the prayer that Mary offers when she learns that she's pregnant with Jesus. 
Eli raises Samuel as his own son because his sons do not walk with the Lord. In fact, we're told in 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 12, it says this about Eli's sons. They were scoundrels, and they had no regard for the Lord. So young Samuel hears his name being called in the night. He thinks it's Eli calling him, so he runs to Eli, who is well-seasoned in life at this point. He's losing his eyesight, we're told. Eli then tells him that he's not the one calling Samuel, and this occurs twice. The third time, he hears a voice. Eli realizes that it's the Lord calling Samuel. And so Eli helps the younger Samuel. He's maybe about 12 years old at this point in his life, that it is the Lord who is calling him. Samuel's being called here to serve as the Lord's prophet to Israel. And due, to, due to the disobedience of Eli's sons, the Lord has called Samuel to take their place. So maybe you can identify with a Samuel, someone uh, who's known of the Lord and has had a long relationship uh, with the Lord, came to faith uh, in the Lord Jesus early in life. We remember uh, people who read scripture to us, we remember people praying with us and praying for us and uh, telling us and showing us the importance of being a part of the body of Christ, uh, attending Sunday school, involved in discipleship ministries, coming to worship. So we may have known of the Lord and known the Lord our entire lives. So in that relationship with Eli and Samuel, the elder Eli is the one who helps the younger Samuel hear the voice of the Lord. So if we've had that experience of Samuel, we're now in the place of Eli, that we have the opportunity to disciple someone else. It's our responsibility as the church. We, the church of Jesus Christ, have the responsibility of raising up the next generation of disciples of Jesus Christ, not just the kids that have the same last name as us, not the ones that we know or the ones that we like. We all have that responsibility to tell our children about Jesus. And so that's a task that is set before all of us, and it's a task that begins in prayer. So as we desire for the Lord to use us uh, in this way to uh, raise up the next generation of followers of Jesus, we continue to pray for those that we are discipling. So Nathaniel and Peter then, as we move into John's gospel, they're uh, a little older when they uh, come to the Lord Jesus. And Jesus has just invited Peter and James and probably John, because he's the author of the gospel, so he works in pretty early following Jesus. So after these men are gathered, they uh, head toward Galilee. It's about 100 miles north of Judea. It would take the better part of a week to get there. When we read the gospels, we think things happened uh, in consecutive days or later that same day, but there's some time needed for travel there. So Philip is originally from the town of Bethsaida, and he's in Galilee to fish. And Jesus has come into Galilee with Andrew and Peter to invite Philip to follow Jesus for that sole reason. Philip then invites Nathaniel to follow Jesus. As he uh, comes to know who Jesus is, he invites Nathaniel to join him. Nathaniel responds then by saying, can anything good come from Nazareth? Nathaniel's from nearby Cana, so there's some uh, rivalry going on there, but he knows Nazareth. He knows it's a small town, and he may have known of Jesus, that he's Mary and Joseph's boy. Is he really the Messiah? Is he really who he says he is? So Nathaniel, in this, making this statement of questioning uh, where Jesus is from, he's questioning who Jesus is, and is he really who Philip says he is? Everyone uh, who, who doubts uh, the Lord Jesus has different reasons uh, for doing so, and it's always good for us to uh, be critical of uh, considering our relationship uh, with the Lord as we continue to walk in faith, to continue, continue to consider who Jesus is. So as Nathaniel then approaches Jesus, Jesus tells Nathaniel who he is. He knows Nathaniel because he's Nathaniel's creator. He says, I saw you under the fig tree. Now, when he says this, he's seen Nathaniel uh, studying scripture there in the shade of the fig tree. And so he knows that he's searching. He's been seeking after the Lord. Nathaniel, uh, Jesus then tells Nathaniel and the other disciples that they will see even greater things than this as they follow Jesus. 
passage concludes with a reference to Genesis chapter 28, the story that we uh, did at Bible Club this uh, past Wednesday, the story we know as Jacob's Ladder of the staircase that uh, appears in Jacob's dream as heaven and earth become one, uh, that God's kingdom is being established here as God has come to earth in Jesus Christ, and that heaven and earth are ultimately united as God has entered his creation. And so there's greater things awaiting these disciples of Jesus. These men that uh, Jesus calls by name uh, to follow them, they offer no excuses as they're being called. Uh, They don't check in at home. They don't check in at work. uh, They don't check their schedule in any way. So they're, they're not checking anything. They're just following Jesus. They go and follow Jesus. That's not the way we respond to it. We're always putting Jesus off. We have all of those excuses. We have to check in and we don't have time because of home or work or family uh, or whatever's going on in our lives. We're always on the run from the Lord. So we ask ourselves then, why are we running from the one who's created us? In the parable of the lost sheep from Luke chapter 15, we hear Jesus saying that he's come to earth to find us, to call us by name, and allow us to live with God now and forever. Gary Burge, in his commentary on the Gospel of John, says this about Jesus gathering his disciples. John, as he writes, wants us to have an experience similar to those portrayed by these five men. He wants us to become disciples who grow in knowledge and devotion, and we're inspired by these stories. John is claiming that discipleship has two essential elements. The disciples must know who Jesus is, and they must have a personal experience that completely reorients who they are. We see people who know Jesus directing other people to Jesus. That's what it means to follow Jesus. If you know Jesus and your relationship with Jesus is of the utmost importance in your life, you're going to want to tell people about it. You're going to want to tell others how you walk with the Lord and how he sustains you through difficult times and how you look forward to being in his presence in the kingdom of heaven. So we continue to hear God calling us. But to hear God's call, we need to put ourselves in a position uh, to hear the Lord speaking to us. And we, in turn, then have to be ready to listen. We have to be people of Scripture, people of prayer, people of worship, listening for God's voice. I've had people tell me over the years that they've audibly heard uh, the voice of God, and I have no doubt that that's possible. But if you don't hear that, it may just be a gentle nudge that you get from the Lord. It may be a a smaller voice, not uh, as loud as the one that Samuel Uh, heard in the temple. We may just see things lining up in our lives that help us uh, trust who Jesus is. We grow into a deeper understanding of, of who God is and how he desires to live in relationship with us. God continues to call us to follow him and to tell others to follow him as well. But God is going to call us to something specific, Uh, as well, and he's going to gift us to do that. Now, we may not be called to be a Samuel, a a prophet, or even Martin Luther King, talking about him uh, earlier to any sort of great thing, but he's going to call us to something specific. When he does that, we're made aware of a need that's uh, in the lives of our uh, neighbors and our community. We become more aware of the gifts that God has given to us as we uh, decipher a uh, a specific call that the Lord has placed on our lives. There may be a burden that's placed on our hearts, and that helps us uh, determine uh, God's call to a specific ministry. It may be something that you've never done before, you've never thought about doing. You could be a a teacher, you could work in our nursery, you could work with the food bank, uh, helping our neighbors who are in need of food. You could be called to the ends of the earth to tell people about Jesus. But as we listen for God's voice to call us, we are called to humble ourselves before the Lord, that we are called to be servants. As we desire for the Lord to 
uh, use us, we will be made great as we humble ourselves before the holiness of God. We're thankful that we worship and serve a God who calls us by name to follow him and gifts us to do the work of his kingdom. Let's pray together. We thank you, O oh God, for your Holy Spirit that speaks faith into our hearts, that speaks uh, your wisdom into our lives. We pray, O oh God, in this week to come that we may desire to glorify and serve you in all that we do. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you now to please stand for our closing hymn, Jesus Calls Us or the Tumult. be seated here before our benediction. We have a special presentation here to conclude our worship here today. Someone who has responded to God's call to service, uh, to the work of his kingdom. Over the last 14 years, Donna Fairful has served, as our, served faithfully as our custodian. Now, we know that Donna is not going anywhere, and uh, it, it dawned on me that if, if I want to see Donna, all I have to do is throw something in my garbage can, and she <laughs> appears and asked if I have any garbage for her. Uh, so anytime I want to see Donna, I can do that. But uh, Donna will continue uh, to serve the church here. So we want to uh, recognize your uh, ministry and thank you for all that you've done as our uh, custodian and many ways that you've served the congregation. Um, but I'd like to have a word of uh, prayer with you here. Heavenly Father, we just uh, thank you for uh, Donna and for the gifts that you've given to her to do your kingdom work and the the strength and encouragement that you've provided. Uh, we thank you for the godly example that she's set, and we thank you for uh, her work as our custodian, and pray that you would uh, continue to move us and, and bless her life and her family. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, at 8 o'clock, you received very similar flowers. These are different, <laughs> so I invite you uh, to take these, but wait, there's more. We have all sorts of fabulous parting gifts, though Donna is not going anywhere. This is from our deacons. Are, is she to open this here? Okay. So, I'll take your flowers. I'll take your flowers here. Yeah.
There's no snow coming to Buffalo, by the way. I'd called the commissioner's office to postpone the one o'clock kickoff today so we could. <laughs> Invited to a reception that awaits in Fellowship Hall that will be uh, taking place in Donna's honor. But first, uh, receive this benediction. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and forevermore. Father, we thank you uh, for our uh, fellowship that awaits us, and we ask your blessing upon our food and the hands that have prepared it. We pray all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.